Carbon dioxide is heavier than air. It's also heavier than oxygen. And just as water is heavier than oil, carbon dioxide tends to fall below air and oxygen in a static body of atmosphere. If it wasn't for the fact that the atmosphere has been swirled, we'd all be dead from CO2 poisoning. However, carbon dioxide's being heavier than both air and oxygen is worth noting when we're thinking about global warming. Another interesting fact about carbon dioxide and air is to be found in a comparison of another of their physical properties. Different materials, including gases, possess a property known as the specific heat capacity. The specific heat capacity of any material is the energy that's required to raise the temperature of one kilogram of it by one degree centigrade. This relationship can be expressed by the simple equation E is equal to the product of S times M times delta T, where E is the heat energy put in, S is the specific heat capacity of the material, M is its mass, and delta T is the temperature difference caused by the heat energy put in. Well, it turns out that the specific heat capacity of carbon dioxide is quite a bit lower than that of air. This means that carbon dioxide experiences a higher temperature change than air experiences for the same amount of heat energy put in. This is why people are worried about carbon emissions. With CO2s being heavier than air, coupled with its being easier heated, the ice caps and glaciers which are at sea level are in danger of being melted. In fact, the melting has already started. This is why we have to act, and act fast. We have to get carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere quickly. Forests are the answer. Trees absorb carbon dioxide at a phenomenal rate. Now, it's very interesting to rearrange our equation to make temperature difference the focus of it. When we do this, we get delta T is equal to E divided by the product of S and M. Making temperature difference the focus like this shows the relationship between the specific heat capacity of the atmosphere and atmospheric temperatures. And it gives us a clue about what to do to save the ice caps and glaciers from melting. Given that the amount of energy coming in from the sun is the same from year to year, we can see from our rearranged equation that if we can somehow increase the specific heat capacity of Earth's combined atmosphere on the denominator, this will produce a lower equilibrium temperature in the total atmosphere. For over a hundred years now, we've been dumping CO2 into the atmosphere without a care in the world. And although we haven't been aware of it, we've been unwittingly reducing the specific heat capacity of the atmosphere and driving up the temperature. We need to take action to get Earth's atmosphere's specific heat capacity back to pre-industrial revolution levels. This is our urgent goal. We can do this by pulling CO2 out of the atmosphere. Massive carbon dioxide absorption through radical and previously unheard of forestry cultivation holds the key to returning atmospheric temperatures back to pre-fossil fuel industrial revolution levels. We are in the business of forest investment and we're of the opinion that the monetizing of the goal to save the ice caps through forest capital values will provide the popular, positive and even the natural stimulus to get the job done. Being cynical about the monetizing of the saving of the planet is only going to slow us down and we're going to have to get ready to defend ourselves from the cynics. It's time to harness the power of the profit motive 
and hitch it to the saving of the planet. Because we've had enough already, with the profit motive having kept bad company until now. We have to change all this, and change it fast. If you would like to invest in forests anywhere in the world, get in touch with us. Anyway, going back to our rearranged equation, you may have noticed something else very interesting about it. It has to do with an assumption we made, an assumption around which the ramifications would be even more horrific. What about the mass M on the denominator? That is, the total weight of the atmosphere. Surely our having pumped CO2 into the atmosphere for over a hundred years is only going to increase M on the denominator, bringing down delta T. Well, if that was all there was to it, then true enough. Just as our equation would predict, the increasing of the mass of the atmosphere would only serve to cool the planet. And the prospect of having vast quantities of real estate lost to higher sea levels would be nothing to worry about. This, of course, ignores the fact that carbon dioxide specific heat capacity is relatively low. But the real horror is still something else. Our assumption at the outset was to do with the idea that if the mass of the atmosphere could be considered to be held constant in our equation, we'd be able to ponder the effects upon temperature of varying the atmospheric specific heat capacity in isolation. In practice though, are there any conditions under which the total mass of the atmosphere could be considered to be actually held constant while varying the combined specific heat capacity? Well, yes. What if the Earth's gravity has the power to hold on to only a fixed mass of atmosphere, whatever that atmosphere is composed of? The prospect of that, coupled with our putting more and more CO2 into the atmosphere, is truly horrific. It would be a bit like a graduated glass cylinder that's used in the chemistry lab, say containing a mixture of oil and water, where more and more water is pumped into the cylinder at a lower level. The logical consequence would be that just as with the oil and water levels rising until overflow of the oil occurred, our putting more and more CO2 into the atmosphere will cause more and more air and carbon dioxide air and oxygen rather, to be lost to outer space. The, a runaway greenhouse effect would then advance apace and we'd all be gone. The loss of oxygen and air would first begin to be evident over the North and South Poles where ozone has already begun to disappear from these places. The air and oxygen would make its escape above the equator where the centrifugal forces on them due to the Earth's rotation would be greatest. For a few years, planet Earth would resemble Saturn with its rings above its equator as Earth shakes off the last remnants of its more lightweight gases. But it doesn't have to be that way. We still have it in our power to head all this off at the pass and we can do it with trees forests and forests of them. Here at Property Glasgow we're in the business of selling forests worldwide and land suitable for forestry. So if you would be interested in forest ownership get in touch with us and if you have a forest you'd like to sell or land that could be suitable for forest cultivation sell it through us. My name's Francis McMenamin and it's been very pleasant to share these ideas with you. I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you.